2014 PBA League quarterfinal continues with our team game. Good for three points. LAX up by 31, looking to advance. Brooklyn Styles and a double. Cuts the lead to 21. Gotta Mika back up on the left lane now as the two teams switch lanes. Mika working on a three bagger for Team LAX. Second but half of the game on the opposite lane. LAX on some strikes, looking to extend their lead back out to 31. And 10 pins. And then again, there again, we see the, the slickness of that left lane and Mika struggling to get his ball to hook up into the pocket. time on that 10 pit. Mike, it's kind of a catch-22 on that lane. You know, the players know it's a little bit tighter, but it's not like you can just square your angles up. You still have to throw the ball a little bit away from the head pin. Um, and, and that's what's tough. I think right now it's just more of a speed thing on that left lane. Soften the speed up just enough to get the ball to turn the corner a little bit harder, and you got it made on that left lane. The right lane, you can be aggressive with. Winner advances, loser eliminated in the PBA League. Huge shot for Smallwood in the seventh. He can cut the lead in half. Well, he's just in beast mode right now. He's been flawless in the competition. Tom Smallwood is just gutsy. That's all, that's all you can really say about it. He's had a lot of success in this building as well. Check out that approach, how he drifts left, body opens up so he can feed the ball to the right, and then that ball ends up perfect in the 1-3 pocket. Smallwood out of Saginaw, Michigan, very, very familiar with Thunderbolt lanes. Now Tackett, Jason Belmonte says, EJ Tackett displays zero fear. Seventh frame. Fearless shot, rips the seven out. Yeah, he, he's not afraid of anything. EJ has got kind of that mental makeup where nothing distracts him. He's not afraid of anything. He doesn't get too jacked up. He's kind of flatlined most of the time, and he just throws a great shot here and just shreds the racket. You're right. He's fearless. Now, Haugen can make up for the miscue. It's hot. 4-7. That one checked up. I moved in one, two. It just checks up. He said the ball checks up. Well, it, it read early and then it went high. So again, that could be a ball change or that could just mean he, that, that could just be him moving his feet. Mm -hmm. Moving his feet a couple. You know, he hasn't bowled too many frames in this in competition. Off, off the shot I threw in practice and it still picked up, so. That's the toughness of the team competition. You it's only the same get place, a different ball. The two shots. Same place with a different ball. Ball's much cleaner. And the other thing is all the traffic in all front of him. Walter. You know, he's a lot farther right than any of the other players. He's kind of in the same zone as Walter Ray, and that's why they keep going back and forth. But these hook, hook guys are beating this oil pattern up, and unfortunately, when you're straight, you got to play farther right. Light and kicks out the double with just a two pin. Seemed surprised by that reaction. Well, you know, Mika went light, leaving uh, kind of that that flat ten. Andres comes in light, EJ Tackett, blew, you know, he ripped the rack. Nobody's gone flush yet on that lane for LAX. They still have a 12-pin lead, 
heading into the ninth and tenth frame. This is going to come down to Rash and Parker Bone, the anchor bowlers for, for each team. But Belmo and Walter Ray need to strike in this ninth frame to set up the ten. You know, Walter Ray just finds a way to get it done. And, you know, he throws the ball straight like Haugen. Haugen's ball checks. Walter Ray, whatever, maybe makes a move. Maybe moves a little bit deeper. But the bottom line, he finds a way to get his ball to finish in the 1-3 pocket and set up the 10th frame for his team. That's no lucky guess. That is an educated maneuver in the foundation frame. Now volleyed over to Belmonte, LAX. Leading, entering the ninth, looking to close out Brooklyn's hopes in the PBA League. Turns away from it, but he gets it to strike. Didn't like it at all. I'm not sure Belmo thought he was going to hit the head pit. He got it. He actually got it left of target. He didn't get it far enough to the right early enough for that ball to pick up, and he thought it was going to 2 8 10 but his speed was soft enough to get that ball to turn the corner. Sean Rash now can strike out for Brooklyn Styles for 226. LAX can strike out the whole team for 238. Come on, come on, come on, Rash has talked about these resets in the past, and what he does in these situations is he focuses on the process instead of the outcome. And he said if he's not going to be in the right position and he's not 100% committed he will not throw the shot great shot I love it somebody in the crowd yelled go to your home ball it sure did man that was just severely packed into the 1-3 pocket right now Sean Rash going rogue here in the 10th frame he needs another couple of strikes to make Parker Bone the third show up in the 10th frame for LAX. So this PBA League quarterfinal match will come down to the 10th frame. Three points to the winning team will advance either in this PBA League. See that grip there, it looks almost semi-fingertip. That's kind of been the story of this match today, is Sean Rash leaving ringing 10 pins. He did in the singles competition, back-to-back -back shots on the left lane and against Belmonte, which cost him. And right now, this could possibly spell the end of Sean Rash's Brooklyn Styles. He spares here, he'll shoot 215. Parker Bone the third would need to go spare and eight for 216. Great 215 final for the Brooklyn Styles, owned by Jesse Williams Messenger come on. and managed by Hall of Famer Johnny Petraglia. Right now, how big is that missed 10 pin in the third frame looking that Michael Haugen whiffed? Cost his team at least 11 pins there. They could sure use it now. And so for everyone that thinks Sean Rash is the only one that has a reset every now and again, Parker Bone resets. Nothing bothers this guy mentally. Yeah. Yeah. Guys a rock. Winner winner chicken dinner right there. The Hall of Famer drops the hammer and the LAX will advance in the PBA League to the semifinal. The scary part is that Parker Bone can still do this on this tour. He's going to go bowl uh, some PBA 50 tournaments as well this, this season. And that's scary. Hammers the eight pin out. Chris Paul's LAX advance over the Brooklyn Styles. Four points to two final. And the LAX advances and Parker Bone, Hall of Famer. That's why you put him there, Randy. Well, Andrew Kane uh, obviously 
was clairvoyant and saw something that nobody else saw. And, uh, obviously, the move paid off. Maybe it was a lefty-lefty thing again. So, LAX defeats Brooklyn 4-2 and advances to the semifinals where they will face the winner of next week's matchup, the New York City WTT Kingpins versus the Detroit Motown Muscle. A tough loss here for the Brooklyn Styles. Let's go down to Randy with Styles manager Johnny Petraglia and franchise player Sean Rash. Thanks, Mike J. With me, a, a dear friend, one of the greatest players of all time. Johnny, I, I know that you have a lot of team experience behind you, even though you came up on the short end in this competition. What is it like? What, what do the players go through in this team competition? Well, we both so much individually, Randy. It's great to have a team competition. I won a couple of Eagles uh, way back when, uh, which was one of the most exciting things I ever did. And, and now coming in here and coaching the greatest bowlers of today is really a lot of fun. I, I'm, I'm so proud of them. Every key shot in the ninth and 10th frame, it was either flush or it was a solid 10. And uh, the solid 10s uh, pretty much uh, did us in. But, you know, uh, Jason and Parker performed in the 10th really great, too. Johnny, thanks a lot. We really enjoyed having you on the telecast. Sean, you know, it, it looked like you guys had a handle on what was going on. You go into the, the team event up two points to one. Halfway through, it looked pretty good, and then all of a sudden it, it unraveled. What happened halfway through the last part of that team, team event game? Well, Randy, I think everybody realized that the team match is what's going to decide everything. Uh, you've got so many great players out now, and the team aspect, and just you know the transition of the lane, both lane seven and lane eight, lane eight were changing so fast. And uh, even though you're only getting one shot in each lane, you've got to be ready to move you know six or seven minutes later. And uh, unfortunately, the ring tens uh, did us in. A uh, missed spare uh, didn't help us really also, but uh, we had a great time as a team. Uh, this is an unbelievable atmosphere, and we look forward to next year. From the end of your singles match against Jason Belmonte to the last shot you threw in team event, how many boards did you move on the lane? On lane seven, I moved a total of 13 boards and uh, six with my eyes. On, on lane eight, I moved a total of 15 boards, 10 with my eyes, balled down, and uh, you know, opened the lane up more because the front part of the lane was hooking so much. And uh, you'll be able to see it for all of us how much we transition through the match. Thanks a lot for your time. Let's send it over to Kimberly Pressler with our winners. Thanks, Randy. I'm here with a very happy LAX team. And Jason Belmonte, today you proved why you were the franchise player and player of the year. Now, you started off, you won in the singles, but you got a little bit lucky in the team's match right here on the left lane. Were you worried? You know, when I look behind me and I see Parker Bone going to step up in the 10th for my team and for me, no, I wasn't worried at all. Now, I was worried when that ball was going halfway down the lane. I, I was hoping for nine, to be honest, and uh, to knock them all over, set Parker up for the 10th frame. Um, it was just a uh, perfect, well, well-written script. Well-written script indeed. And let's talk to the manager, Andrew, here. Now, you started it all off with the perfect lineup. Your strategy paid off for you. What are your thoughts going into semifinals? Thoughts going into semifinals is I think we're going to stick with our strategy. The guys are happy. The team's working well together, and uh, and we won. So it's nice to be 1-0 and, and, and headed off to the next match. But couldn't have asked for a better team. Couldn't be prouder of these guys right now. Now, how excited are you right now that you decided to put Parker Bone into that anchor position. Oh, I, I'm thrilled, but you know, strategy is only a part of it. These guys have to throw the shots, and you know what? He came through. Jason set him up perfectly. Uh, you know, he, he might have been a little bit worried, but once that four pin fell, I knew we were in great shape because I know Parker's going to throw it high, high hard one for the money, and, and just like every other time, he's done it. That's right. Now, Parker, Andrew said it best. You had some big plays today. You came through. You needed to get at least a spare in the tenth. How much pressure were you under? Well, you know that the whole team is behind you, but I got to be honest, the mastermind was genius there. The last shot, it went right through the 8-9, and you couldn't ask for a better shot when it's all said and done. All right, well, congratulations to the LAX team. You guys move on to the semifinals. Who will LAX face in the semifinals? Find out next Sunday at 3 Eastern as Billy Jean King's New York City WTT Kingpins take on Jerome Bettison's Motown Muscle.
Jason Belmonte's win over Sean Rash started the day off on the right foot for LAX, who also won the five-man team competition to prevail 4-2 over the Brooklyn Styles here in the quarterfinals of this season's PBA League. For Randy Peterson and Kimberly Pressler, this is Mike Jakubowski. See you back here next week at Thunderbolt Lanes for New York City versus Detroit.